Hi, welcome back. So here's where we currently are or where we left our project um, with our product page, our working user management where we were able to sign up and sign in and log out and so on. And that's all great. And I'll come back to all that user related stuff later. But I think now is the time to actually get started with, well, the shopping cart. That is what the series is about in the end, right? So let's make this button work and let's add a, the functionality to, well, add items to the card as well as see the card. So how do we do this? Well, there are different approaches, but I'm going to go with the approach of storing the card in the user session, which means that it persists if we navigate across pages or even if we'll leave the page and come back later as long as the session is still valid. And the advantage of this is that it, that it will also work for anonymous users. So for users who didn't log in. And that of course is an important feature because you don't only want to have your shopping cart for logged in users, but also for logged out or well, not signed up users. So session based will be the approach I'll follow. And yeah, with that, I'd say let's get started. I will get started in my project here. And the very first thing I want to do is I want to configure my session appropriately. If I go to the app.js file, you'll probably remember that we already use express session. We uh, set it up here and we also use it to flash messages until now. And that's all great, but I need to do some additional things. I want to add a session store due to it specifically because the session has to be stored somewhere on the server, right? And currently it's stored in memory. Now that really isn't something you wanna do in production as it has memory leaks and it's not really optimized in any way. So we need a different store as we won't store it in memory. Now which stores can we use? Let's have a look. I'll head over to the Express, Express Session page, this GitHub page here, and here, right at the beginning, you'll see a warning that we shouldn't use the memory store, which is the default, which is only good for testing or development purposes, but that we should use the, uh, well, one of the compatible session stores. So if I click this link, we see, well, a list of session stores we may, uh, we, we may use or we may install for our session to work with. And as you can see, we basically got a lot of different databases and so on we could use. Now, since we already use MongoDB, I think it would make sense to use Mongo. And while we could either use connect Mongo or connect MongoDB session, well, I'm going to go with connect Mongo just because, well, I know it. And if I click on this, we are taking to the respective um, NPM page of this package. And of course, we will also find installation instructions here, but we also find instructions on how to configure it. And one important thing is, of course, that we already do have an established MongoDB connection in our application through Mongoose. The great thing with Mongo's store is that we can reuse this connection. So we don't have to open another connection, therefore have two open connections, which doesn't make any sense, but we can use Mongo's connection to, well, for this store to store our session in Mongo database. Now, since we're storing the session in the Mongo database, another question is, how does it get cleaned up for the expired sessions, right? Because we don't want to crowd our database with old sessions which are no longer valid. Well, the package answers this question too. If we scroll down, we see this session expiration part and we are, well, we can read that expired sessions are automatically removed with the TTL collection feature of MongoDB, which is a built-in uh, feature where we can basically specify when certain records should be removed automatically. And this is all managed by this Mongo store, which is of course great and well makes it very good to use here. So that has been a lot of talking, let's install it. So back in my project, I'll just open up a new uh, terminal window here. And uh, let me make this a little bit bigger so that you can see it. And then I'm going to run npm install minus minus save to install it as a production dependency. And then connect mongo is the name of uh, our store here, as you can see, 
on the well on the page of this package. So I'm going to run this, and with that installed, I'll make this smaller again. I will, of course, use it here in my app.js when I set up my session. I want to use this new store and I want to tell my session that it shouldn't use the default memory store anymore, of course. So in order to do this, I'll first add an import here, let's say right below the validator, wherever you want at the top. Uh, important part is that you do it after importing your session here, your session package. And I'll name it Mongo store. And I will, of course, require connect Mongo, the package I just installed. And this basically exports a function to which I need to pass my session like this. So with this, I'm importing Mongo store, but of course I also need to configure my session. I'm doing this down here where I will set up my session with this JavaScript object. And I'll just restructure this so that we can see this a bit clearer since we'll add some options here. So this is how we currently initialize our session and that's fine, but I need to add something. Most importantly, of course, I need to add a store with the store key here. And here I add a new Mongo store, the package I just installed. And this store here also takes some um, configuration or options. Specifically, one important one is that I specify the mongoose connection key to tell it to not open a new connection on its own, which you could do, of course, check out the NPM page for more information. But instead that I want to use my existing mongoose connection, which I can access on my mongoose object with the connection property here. With that, I'm making sure that no new connection is opened. And then I'll add another uh, option to the session, not to the store, to the session, um, the cookie. I want to configure it. Um, specifically, I want to configure how long it should live, so how long my sessions should live before they expire. I do this by setting the max age key here, and I will set it to, let's say, 180 minutes, so I have to multiply this with 60 seconds, and then when, with 1000 milliseconds, since max age expects a value in milliseconds. So with that, I'm setting it to 180 um minutes, so three hours, and of course change this to your needs for testing. You might also maybe reduce it to 10 seconds to see if it expires and so on. But yeah, I'll go with uh, with this default value here. And with that, um, the, the session has been configured. You are now storing it in MongoDB on the server, on the client, of course, still in the cookie, and it will expire after three hours. I also want to do something else. I want to make my session available in my views so that through handlebars I can directly access my session. And I already have a middleware here where I make my authentication status available. And I'll do the same for the session. So I'll add res locals and then name it session. And I will pass the session object. And again, this just makes sure that I may access session in all my templates without having it to pass or without having to pass it explicitly um, in my routes uh, file or in my um, routes functions. So I can always access the session variable now in all my views. So great, that has been the basic session setup. But with that, of course, the well, the basics are done, but we're not able to do anything else than before. So that'll be what I'll next have a look at.